brothers and sisters who are following us on our website. Thank you for uh, being with us. Though you are far away, you are here in the spirit, worshiping with us. And thank you for all of you who are here today as uh, we worship the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The message this morning is the virtue of waiting upon God. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, help us to assimilate the words today, Lord. Help us to understand and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will deliver the, your words into our hearts, plant it into our mind and hearts, Lord, so that we will be able to please you and walk with you. Thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity, this freedom to worship and to listen to your words. Lord, as we partake this bread of life together, may your Holy Spirit be with us and minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our text this um, morning is in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26 to 31. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created this. He who brings our <laughs> he who brings out their hosts by number calling them all by name by the great by by the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power no one is mighty why do you say o jacob and and speak o israel my way is hidden from the lord and my right is disregarded by my god in verse 20 have you not known have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the, to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. Verse 31 of uh, Isaiah chapter 40. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. First that I would like to share to you this morning is people like us are prone to worry. And when that happens, we question God, isn't it? We question God. We are prone to worry. We easily get worry of many things. Worry for tomorrow, worry for today, worry for our children, worry for, for our friends. Sometimes the worries we have is not really ours. We just pick them up. Sometimes the problems of your friend is not your problem. You just have to pray for them and let God, let go and let God. But we carry them. So there are unwanted worries. However, we have real, real worries of our lives. And one of the things that is very challenging to us is waiting upon the Lord. Waiting is one of the most challenging things to do when you are anxious to know the result. You want it now. You want it tomorrow. You know? We make that push button. Like you put your coffee uh, to heat up in 15 minutes, press it, and then in 15 minutes, there you go. Right? 15, 15 seconds, I should say, or 15 minutes. There you go. Oh, 15 minutes is very, very long. It will dry up. Oh, 30 seconds, I should say. Put it in 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, it's, you know, uh, heated enough to drink. So sometimes when we go to our knees in prayer, we make that a push-button machine. Lord, I want it now. 
Lord, please, tomorrow I need this. Sometimes God sees the needs and he does, but not most of the time. Another example of a w- waiting that worries us so much is when we are anxious to know the result. An example is a pregnant woman who is getting close to giving birth to a child. She counts the days and months as uh, the delivery is getting closer and closer to the point of few days to wait. She counts the days and the time. And as the time goes, she also counts the seconds. The day of deliverance, she counts the hour, minutes, and seconds. With excruciating pain, she just wished the baby will be out sooner. Right? And then um, you pray and you say, Lord, please let this baby out now when you are in labor. But sometimes it, in many times it doesn't happen that way. And so waiting to deliver your baby is also bringing anxiety to us or becoming a problem because there is a waiting period on it. And we don't, it's the nature of men don't want to wait. We want instant, especially nowadays. We are more prone to instantaneous things like, your kid, you just press the button, and there you go, you're watching. You know, you want to, you know, have a noodles, instant noodles, instant babies, you know, um, instant bread. We have bread maker that will um, make bread um, easier and less hours than we used to to do or, bra- or bake. And the same, it it is the same when we have problems trying to find out a solution. When we get anxious, anxious to the result, we don't want to wait. And we want, Lord, now we tend to count the days too, like the, the pregnant mother or pregnant woman. We count the days, the months, the years that passes by. And then we say, what now, Lord? When? We have all those questions. In time like this, the scripture has a prescription for us. And verse 26 of chapter uh, 40 of Isaiah, verse 26 and 27, it says, Lift up your eyes on high and see who created you. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is feeble. When we are lacking of patience or we are so anxious that we cannot wait, just lift up on high and see the stars. And those stars has their own name. God named one by one. And try to count all the stars that you can count them. And probably you you will try. And by the time you're tired counting and and you have not counted them all, your problems will subside. Because you know that those who name the stars was God and named them and, and put them numerously that you cannot even count is the one whom you need with your problems. And um, when we are so anxious of anything or can't wait, just think about God, how God created the world. He didn't create it in one day. He created it in seven days. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. God has given all the names of the birds and and the fish in the sea and the animals, you know. And it's not easy to do that. But God did. But uh, it's God 
perfected, but it took time. So when God took time to create everything that we have seen on earth and, and took time to create you and I, then we should know that God is, want, God is imputing into our hearts and minds that waiting is so important. Amen? Uh, a lot of times we ask questions, uh, and when we, we ask questions, we want the answer now. And truly, God has the answers of all our questions because God is not mute. Hindi siya puti or cannot hear. Unlike me, sometimes I can't hear. So when you're talking to me, you have to talk louder because uh, I have a hard time <laughs> um, hearing. He always have an answer in every circumstance of our life. Always have an answer. All we have to do is go to the Word. Amen. The reason why we can't find the answer is we don't go to His Word. He knew exactly what we need when we have problems, and He already prescribed it there. Don't you know if you notice when you go to the doctor and and, and uh, when you are sick and uh, um, the doctor would ask you what do you feel and you know um, uh, what do you think is is best for you uh, well then you, you would say this is what I feel and I don't know what best for me doctor that's why I'm here and then he, he'll give you after telling how you feel and what you feel then he will give you a prescription right God knows what we feel and who we are God knows our problems and he gives prescription through his words. That is why a lot of Christians fail because they don't go to God's prescription, his word. In, eight, in, in, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, he said, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He's the creator of all things. He's the, he is also the God of the ends of the world. And he never wor worries. He said he never faints. And his understanding is unsearchable. So if God doesn't worry, why worry when you can pray? Amen? God wants the best for us. His understanding is unsearchable. We cannot fathom God's understanding. Sometimes we don't understand ourselves. Oh, why am I doing this? Why am I thinking that? Isn't it sometimes you do things you don't understand? Come on. Uh, say yes if you are. Probably I'm the only one who is like that. Yeah. And those things you don't understand, God understands us beyond what you think. Amen. And so when when we are in the midst of um thinking of things we don't understand or when we are confused we go to our creator because he has prescription for us amen and his prescription is life abundance hope mercy and grace God is the source of our peace when we are in trouble so when we worry we go to him and he will give us peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Amen. In John 14, 27, it says, and I will be reading in New Living Translation. I am leaving you with a gift. It's a gift. Do you know that we have tons of gifts from the Lord we don't even know? He said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. 
So don't be troubled or be afraid. So whatever happens to our lives, it may be good or bad. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Amen? And in the midst of those circumstances that we dislike or we are troubled about, he said, here is my gift. Peace. Think about me. Think about Jesus who died for you and who, who, who saved you and resurrected from the dead so that you too, you and I, have life eternally. Everything was done for us. All we have to do is go to the Word. As I said, a lot of times we don't know. It's already there. The answer is already there. Only we don't read His Word. Remember, if we parents here, you know, you know to prepare the breakfast of your children because you know what their needs, right? You plan for them. You buy things for them. You buy the best for them that your money can buy, of course. So the same with our Heavenly Father. He already has everything for us. All we have to do is have faith and trust of what we have done. He said, seek ye first, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. All. Shall we say all? All. Is there nothing left? None. It's all. Amen. He gives, and then he said in verse 29.30, when you're afraid, when you're weak, he said he gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might or to him who is weak, he increases his strength. Even you shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. God knows that all of us get tired. So when you're exhausted, all you have to do is rest. Simple. Don't, don't fret. Amen. Sometimes we make our problems complicated. And God knows when you're exhausted. When I say, God, when we came home last night, I was really, you know, driving more than 10 hours is so tiresome. And so I said, I just want to lay down. I told my husband, I just want to lay down. I don't want to eat my, my dinner. And then when I was laying down, I just, I thought I'm going to sleep right away. But then a little while after laying down, I felt strong again. And I have to seek the Lord for, you know, the message for tonight. I already have the message that God put in my heart, but I need to pray. I need God's anointing. I need to seek the Lord. Is this the one that my, your people in praise and worship fellowship needs? You know, because... Um, it's easy to make the sermon, but it's hard to, f to, to make one that is suited to God's people, like here at our congregation. So I want God's will in this message. I want him to be, um, to be glorified. So he gives power when, when we are weak, and he gives strength when we are weak and when we are exhausted then he give us rest he said in, in, in Matthew 11 um, in, in that part uh, the, the last uh, 11 30 if I'm not mistaken 28 29 30 Jesus has um, invitation Come to me, all ye are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am. For he said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So rest. There's nothing wrong when you rest. That's why he said rest. Even God rests on the seventh day. Some of us don't want to rest. And then when we're exhausted, we complain. Yeah? Oh, 
so tired. Yeah, he says, you make yourself tired. But God wants us to rest on the seventh day. See, sitting here, hearing God's word, is a resting in your body and a resting in your soul. Amen. Can you say amen? All of us, young and old, women and women, uh, women and men, you know, single, married, we faint. We, at many times, are exhausted with the things we do. However, Jesus gives us assurance that he has given us the power to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm us. And Luke 10, 19, that no one shall harm us. We will overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm us. But sometimes we harm ourselves and we blame it to the enemy. Hello? Don't do that. Because God will not bear you for that. Yes. Don't harm yourself. And don't when you harm yourself, you blame it to God. No, that's your own making. But one thing that we know that God assured us, when the enemy, the power of the enemy come to us and want to destroy us, he said, you will overcome and nothing shall harm you. Can you say amen? Waiting is a virtue. Most challenging that, you know, um, this is the most challenging that most do not want when weariness and anxiousness gets to us. Waiting is one of that. I be, I'll, I'll confess to you that waiting is one of my big challenges in life. It is the most challenging things to do when you are anxious to know the result. Waiting is when you're anxious, you don't want to wait, isn't it? An example is a pregnant woman um, that I just mentioned a while ago. She counts the days and months as the delivery getting closer and closer to the point a few days to wait. She counts the day with, with X time. The day of delivery, she counts the hour, minutes, and seconds. We have one here, Jennifer. I wonder if Jennifer is identifying with what I say. With excruciating pain, wishing that the baby will come out sooner. When it's getting heavy, <laughs> oh, Lord, I just can't wait till my baby is born. You count every second. And when the baby is born, you feel repose, you feel rested, filled with joy, seeing the fruit of your womb will make the pain go away. So when we have excruciate, excruciating pain or, or severe uh, challenges in life and trials and problems, the secret is waiting upon the Lord in prayer and in reading his word so he can navigate us. And when that when God do his part, it's just like, you know, giving birth of a baby, you will see how beautiful it is that God planned for you on that waiting period. And then, uh, and then you will have your, your, your anxiousness, your worrisome uh, mind will be replaced with joy. And you will say, thank you, Lord. No wonder why you make me wait for 10 years to marry Pilar, you know? You'd be thankful. Amen? So when we wait, there is a reason why God wants us to wait. And then when the answer comes, it may be too long to wait, but when the answer comes, your strength renews. And you begin to feel as if nothing happens, right? You forget about the, the troublesome mind or, 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 or heart that you have. And, and then you will praise the Lord for it. So um, the same problems 
it is the same when we have problems flying, trying to find a solution and, and get and, and get the reaction while waiting. We tend we tend to um, you know when we are waiting, there are only two things that happen. You become impatient or patient. Some people walk away. There are over there are 500 people who went to the upper room to wait for the Holy Spirit to come that Jesus sent to them, right? And then only 120 people baptized in the Holy Spirit because the rest walked away because they cannot wait. And those 120 people was used of God to birth the church of Christ, amen, and turn the world upside down. In times of our weary sign and unpatient moments, God has a prescription for us. Amen. And Isaiah 40, 31 tells us, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and, and not faint. Why God said that those who wait upon him is like an eagle? Why, you, why God liken us into an eagle? Let us see the characteristics of an eagle and the biblical principles that, it, that attach with this principle and why we must be like an eagle. Number one is eagles fly at high attitude not with low-flying birds like sparrows or other small birds. He always aim high. We Christian must aim high because we're going up there to heaven. Amen. We are not from this world. Don't look down. Look up. Amen. Because one day we will get there when Jesus comes. Amen. Number one principle is to be an eagle Christian. You must go with other eagles and stay away from sparrows and ravens. Hebrews 10.25, it says that forsaking not the fellowship of the believers. Always with the believers. When there is Bible study and you're not working, go. When there is fellowship uh, in a church, go. When there is uh, a prayer meeting or Bible study, when you're not working, Go because you know the work, uh, the the work at the house like vacuuming, uh, washing the dishes, you know that can that can wait. But the fellowship, the Bible study, is precious. It I think for me it can wait because what I have I can learn today I may not learn tomorrow. It's only today, so I try my best to go to every fellowship I can attend to. So some people uh, don't have um, the stamina to, to live like an eagle is because they don't stay with the eagles. They, go, they stay with the sparrows. They stay with the ravens. You know, if you, if you um, um, spend much time to the world or to the worldly people, eventually you will be weakened because they were the one who's feeding you things. And nowadays, you don't want to take the chance because the world is getting, uh, is getting um, evil. We need more of God. We need more of the word. Amen. Number two is have a strong vision and can focus on objects up to th these. The, the eagles have a strong vision and focus on objects up to three miles away. When an eagle sights his prey, he will not move his focus when the target until he success successfully captures it. We should be focused on what we want to become of our lives. Amen. If you want to go to heaven, focus on godly things. If you want to go to heaven, focus on, 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 on how you will feed yourself to be able to fly like an eagle to get up. 
Amen. Jesus will come again, and we will meet him in the air. He will not say, I'll go to earth and pick up one of each of you. No, we will meet him in the air. There will be rapture. Yes? Yes. So let, let's just be focused on, on the things above, not on the things below. And we can find that in our fellowship, in our Bible study. We, the more we are, the more we are soaked in the word, the more we know him and the power of his resurrection. The more we are soaked in the word, the more we know of you and of his love and, his, and of his power in our lives. Can I hear amen for that? Amen. So um, what is the target? When he has a target, when he, is, he wants to eat, to, to pray for an, prey on animals, he focuses on it. And when he, he, he dies and he gets that prey, he's taking a risk. You know, not all of the things we do for the Lord is, is free from risk. When we follow the Lord, we take risks. But however, we know, we know that that uh, we know that God is with us, and that what we are doing is for His glory and honor. Amen. When we feed our life with the Word, we begin to shine from evil things, and our friends leave us. Right? Sometimes relatives leave us. That's that's a risk, losing your friends, losing your relatives. You know, um, with my husband and I, we are taking risks every time we plant a church. We go to a place we don't know, we don't know what would be become of our lives, but we know that we know that we know God wanted us to plant a church in that place. And lo and behold, God is faithful. You know, when you're taking the risk for the glory of God, God will not fail you. Uh, the seventh church we are planting now is in Yuma, Arizona. And I took the risk. My husband took the risk. I, you know, the driving straight is 11 hours and 40 minutes, but was, you know, was visiting the restroom and eating. It takes us 14, 14 to 14 and a half hours on the road to get there. That's a risk for us. But then that's what pleases the Lord and that's where God called us so we have to focus even if it's risky. Because when when we are focused, we will snatch all the prey for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We will bring them to the Lord. Like the eagle, he when he wants to eat fresh animal, he is going to go and take those prey uh, because eagles don't don't eat um, rotten animals. They always eat fresh. Okay, so we want those fresh souls to be brought to God. Amen. Amen. So when we focus. We focus on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The third is he kills the snakes in the air, or in other words, he kills her, his enemy in the high places. The eagle does not fight the snake on the ground. Instead, he picks up the snake into the sky, and then that changes it changes the battleground and then releases the snake into the sky atmosphere. And we know that the snake has no stamina or power or balance in the air. And that's the battleground is. You know, if you, we don't solve our problems and, and, and fight with the enemy on the ground, we'll lose the battle. That's not your ground. That's not your territory. Go to your, bring them into your territory. That's why we have fasting and prayer. 
we have prayer nights here in the church because we are bringing the enemy into our territory. We're bringing the problems into our territory so that we can defeat whatever the enemy is bringing to destroy his people. Amen. You don't, you don't, um, I, you don't fight the enemy in the ground. We have to bring them, snatch them in our ground and, and kill them in our ground. Amen. Uh, overcome. In other words, uh, excuse my word, uh, overcome, the word of God says. We will overcome them. Amen. Because in our ground, they are vulnerable. Principle, the principle of this is that the snake has no stamina or balance in our ground. So don't fight your fight in the ground of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Principles do not, the, the reason why you do not fight evil or Satan in his ground is is that uh, God wants us to be victorious. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, fight your enemy on the higher ground. Christians' higher ground is where our battleground is. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The higher ground is the place where we have to fight the battle. Amen? Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord Almighty. So he does everything for us. All we have to do is take that, trust God, have faith in the word. Amen. Therefore, put, it says also here, therefore put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, stand. We are in the midst of evil world. And the only thing that will survive us is our faith and trust in the Lord's word and obedience to what he says to us. Number four, eagles eat only fresh prey and never eat dead body. Unlike the vultures eat dead animals, but eagle will not. Be careful about what you feed to your eyes and ears. Don't feed your bodies or your thoughts with um, magazines that are not, you know, um, healthy to your, to your, to your mind and and feelings. Internet, comics, movies, or TV, uh, TV programs, or in Instagram. There are so many things in there that doesn't cater to us. So please, most of all, feed our life with God's word. Amen. And in that way, we can discern what is wrong in this magazine, what is wrong in this TV program, what is wrong of me being in the Facebook every day, what is wrong. We see what is wrong, and then we abstain from what is wrong. Amen. Okay, five is when the storm clouds gather, eagles get excited. Are you excited when the storm of life comes to, your, to you? I don't think so. We don't want trials. We don't, want, we don't want storm of life. We don't want storms. We don't welcome storms. Because if so many devastation, the houses will be, you know, uh, will fall apart. Um, trees will fall down. You know, they, they, some of them are being uprooted too. We don't. We don't welcome them. But when storms gather, the eagles get excited. Yay. 
An eagle uses a storm wind to lift himself higher, far above the cloud. In the meantime, all the other birds hide in the leaves and branches of the trees that are being uh, tossed and fro by the wind. But the eagles fly above. And the wind, when they fly, the wind pushes them up so they can easily get into the very top of, of where they wanted to be in the cloud. We, c we can use Principle 5. We can use the storms of our life to rise to greater height. Amen. High achievers thrive and uh, on challenges and use them profitably. It's profitable to us when the storm of life comes, that means that we are being strengthened. Amen. The more we are moved back and forth, the more the roots of faith is being planted and rooted into the ground of faith. Amen. Into the ground of God's foundation. Amen. Because it loosens up. You know, a tree uh, like the coconut tree or palm tree, when the storms comes, you know, and heavy rain comes, the soil is uh, on, uh, on top of it is loosened, and that's when more water gets inside, deep into the roots, because the topsoil is loosened. That brings, you know, that, that makes the, the, the water gets into the deeper part of the tree. Amen. So let's welcome them. Your pastor, your pastors, my husband and I are into the, into the midst of the storm. But we are happy because we know that storm will get us there where God wants us to say the victory over the storm happened because of God. Amen. And then when, 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 when the eagles get on top, on the top part of the clouds, because the storm is not um, as, as high as, as where he is, then he will just watch the storm. He's not, he's not affected by the storm. See, when we submit to the Lord and focus on Jesus and, and, and just make our life dedicated to him, then the Holy Spirit will exalt us high above our storm and we will become victorious. Amen. In James chapter 7 verse it chap in James chapter 4 verse 7 it says submit yourself to God resist the devil and the devil shall flee from you. So submitting to God be controlled by the Lord. Don't you know we want to control ourselves. I want this. No one can tell me that. I am the boss, you know. No one can tell me what to do. I am the boss. How about when God telling you what to do? You're still the you're still the boss. If you're still the boss, you then you are not submitted yourselves to God. But God should submit yourselves then then to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Because when you are submitted, when you are in God's control, the devil cannot harm you. Because God envelopes you. Amen. You're inside an envelope. You are inside an envelope. So God is outside you are in. Amen. Do you want to be in with God? Yes. Amen. Another is an eagle just before it thrusts. We must be wise because some people take advantage of us, Christian. You know when a female eagle needs a nail to make, she just his commitment. Only then will she allow him to make her stand. Let's test. Test every spirit. Amen? It, 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 tests, it, it aligns with our spirit. If it aligns with the spirit of God. Amen. Test before you trust people. 
I have seen so many people in the fellowship that he's been taking advantage of. And I myself was one of them. Now we have to test before we speak to them. Whether in private life or business, one should test people's commitment to partnership in life or affiliation with God. Or affiliation with God must be tested. While training her young ones to fly, a mother eagle flows to the e the eaglets out of the nest. So when, you know, this is how they train their babies when they have eaglets. The babies, the eaglets, when they begin to, uh, when when the the feather is beginning to 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 surface the skin, beginning to grow, the mother will go to the high place or to the top of the tree or on the edge of a, a valley and drop all the eaglets. And when the eaglets is dropped, <gasps> they don't know what to do, you know. And then when they're, they're almost on the ground, the mother eagle will swoop them and bring them back high. And then again, there is an exercise. We have to exercise our, our talents God gave us. You know, when, when you are given, uh, when your feather is, is, is when, you're, when your fa feather in preaching the gospel is about to grow up, then it's time to practice. That's why we practice people in the church. And then he will throw them again. And the eaglets are so, so nervous. Before they get to the ground, the mother will them, uh, swoop them again. You know, that's why when your pastor come to you and say, you know, uh, do this for our fellowship so we can bring more people or we can advance the ministry. Pray about it because your pastor will not tell you to do that if we don't see any improvement or any talents or anything in you that can be used for the glory of God. I will not come to you and say that. And, and uh, and at the same token, I am there for you. Now, in closing, God used the eagle for us, an example. And um, God uses pastors and other people in the church for you to exercise your gifting, your talents. And eagles don't always have a quiet and comfortable moment. They don't have easy life. And so do we. If we are likened into an eagle of the Lord, grow like an eagle. Don't expect easy life because in the difficulties of life, in the storm of life, that's when we become strong, amen, and become used of God. So, like the eagle, God is calling us to wait upon him and learn to soar higher above the cares, trials, trivial pursuits of life. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There is always a strength God uh, gives us. They shall mount up with wings like, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He will help us run and not be weary. He will help us walk and not faint. Amen. Praise the Lord. So waiting is worth it. Abraham waited uh, when he, w so many years. When he was 99, that's when he got a son that God promised him to have. Noah... Um, is 600 years old when he built the ark for 120 years. Too long. 
for us, but for God is not long. It's God's timing. Joseph waited for 13 years before he become frightened of Potiphar. Mary and Martha waited for for four days for long to be resurrected from the dead. It takes seven days to wait for the Holy Spirit to come down to the people who are waiting for him. Remember God's promise and shall receive. In Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13, and as we look up to the Lord, I want you to think about this all the time. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord is speaking to us. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. In verse 13, there are so many. For you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So rest in God's character. Shall we? God is faithful. God is merciful. God is graceful. Probably today you need God's love, more of his love. Probably we need more of his guidance in a crucial decision you have to make. Probably you need solution on this problems that you are having. Probably you need God in your marriage. You need God in your healing. You need God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Probably you say, Lord, I need you to empower me, empower me with all the things I do for your ministry and for your glory and honor. Probably you're saying today or standing there and saying, Lord, I need you every day to guide me. If, if there is, if, if I did something, forgive me. That is not pleasing to you, forgive me. Lord, give me the patience to wait upon you. I hope these things will be real to us as we ponder on, 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 on what I have en enumerated to you. Re rely upon God's love, for he is love. Never thought that God loves you less when you are down. His love mercy and grace endures forever. Amen. And as we take our communion, I would like uh, our usher to give the communion. Just keep on praying and, and relating what you have in your life at this moment in prayer. 